Hello and welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. Shakit Hislop is back. Stevie Nicol has had a fresh haircut for today's edition. Looking mighty fine as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the Premier League, shall we? Lots to look forward to this weekend. A look at the top of the table where leaders Arsenal maintain that five-point lead. They are on the hunt for a fifth Premier League win on the trot when they take on Fulham at Craven Cottage on Sunday. Now, perhaps it wouldn't usually be seen as a big hurdle for the Gunners, but Fulham a seventh, as you can see. Last game against Brentford aside, it's been a good run of form for them as well. Arsenal's Granit Xhaka has been talking about the pressure on his side as league leaders ahead of the game as well. He said that you can see that every team is playing different against us. They're dropping a lot. Sometimes they're pressing us as well. But this is what happens when you are top of the league. There is much more pressure than before, for sure. But in general, I think we are doing well. I think there's a good mentality in the team. Let's try to keep that. Let's welcome in Stuart Robson and Archie Rin Tut. You obviously know Archie from our Bundesliga coverage, but he's a massive Fulham fan as well. Yeah. So we're going to get his take on Fulham. But I will start with you, Stuart. Are you surprised with the side that Mikel Arteta put out in the Europa League this week, given that it was such a strong side and the fact that they're going for the Premier League title this year? Yes, I think they also want to win the Europa League. He's got to put out... They've got some good momentum at the moment. Yes, he rested one or two players that were, were, were maybe key, but I think he had to put out a good side. I think, so, think that sent the right message to the players. It sent the right message to the fans. And, uh, you know, when you bring in the likes of Jorginho in, who's had success at Chelsea and, and for, for Italy, uh, and the likes of Ryan Nelson, Zinchenko, the, the, the two players that didn't play particularly well were Turner and Kivior, but the rest of the players, I thought, had a, had a decent game. Vieira was excellent. I'm not sure he's going to play against Fulham. But I, I wasn't surprised by the team he put out. And I thought it was a, 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 good, a good enough performance from Arsenal to go and win the second league. Stevie, you know well what it's like to be involved in a title race. Yeah. What Arteta thinking here when it comes to the Europa League and putting a team out like this? How do you manage that? Well, I think so far he's managed it well. I like what he did in this game. Um, he put a strong side out, almost his, his full 11, uh, and went to win the game. And then you saw him taking players off at the end. I, I, I love that he's gone about it that way. And I also think that he's doing the right thing as far as trying to win this tournament. You know, you can't, you can't just switch on and off the tap of we want to win this game and we don't want to win the other game. You know, when you want to be an elite player, an elite club, an elite team, you want to win everything you play in, then you have to have a mentality. Every time you step on the field that you're going to win. And the manager has to be careful that he puts a side out that reflects that. And I think that's what he's done. He's, every time he's put a team out, regardless of resting a couple of players, it's got, we want to win this game written all over it. And so the more you're, the more you're hitting the back of the head about winning and the mentality of winning, then the more it will happen. And so I think he's doing, so far, he's got everything right. Do you agree with Stevie there, Shaka? Yeah, I, I, I do. Though I, I do see uh, Sid in, in the case of... of uh, Bakayo Saka, I'm surprised that he played a full 90 minutes. There, there are a couple of others as well that I, I thought, given their importance to the team over the course of the season, in, in this game, the first leg of, of a, a Europa League tie, I, I didn't expect them to play 90 minutes. But Saka's a young player. He probably said to Arteta, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to play, to play 90 minutes. The other thing to that is, um, pretty soon, they haven't also have a, a little bit of a break, an international break. They, they've got... Fulham, second leg, I think Palace, and then they've got a couple of weeks off. But of course, the likes of, of Bakayo Saka, you expect, will, will feature prominently for, for England over, over, over the international break in, in, in their two games. So it really does become a little bit of a balancing act. And now, for me, I, I totally understand if Arteta made 11 changes, in, in all honesty. And much to take Stevie's point, this is still a young team trying to endure um, a level of pressure that they're not used to, a, level of, a, level, a lesser level of pressure that got the better them last season. Um, and they don't have the type of squad that a Manchester City do. So I, I honestly thought that you'd see more rotation from Mikel Arteta. But he trusts his players to, to play this, he trusts his players, players to handle the pressure. Um, I, I, I don't have much of an issue with that either. Proof of being in, in the eating of the pudding, though. What do you think, Archie? Let's look at the Fulham point of view on this one. Can they take advantage of the fact that it was this side playing on Thursday night? Look, I'm a calculated pessimist. I always tip <laughs> Fulham to lose against the top teams. 
And yet, of course, there is a bit of me that thinks that Fulham can beat Arsenal. I've seen the way that uh, the team has performed against the top team so far this season. And with the exception of a 4-0 defeat to Newcastle, 4-1 defeat to Newcastle, where Zhao Polina couldn't play because he was suspended, which is relevant to this Sunday as well, and a 3-1 defeat to West Ham, where I'd say a lot of refereeing decisions play, played a role in that game. Fulham have not lost a single game by more than one goal this season. That tells you how close they've run every team in the division. I think somebody like Kenny Tete up against Reese Nelson, I saw the way that Kenny Tete played against Mikhailo Mudrik and Raheem Sterling uh, the other week and had, had no problems in terms of one-on-one -on -one duels. That, for me, is an interesting matchup. How Fulham cope without Jao Pelinia, who is suspended, uh, with Sasha Lukic in the middle and Harrison Reed, and also Willian against a club where he didn't shine a point to prove. He already proved a point against Chelsea when he scored one of the goals in, in the win there. So, yeah, I think the question is whether he'll go with Willian and Solomon or whether he brings in Deco Dover Reed to give the team a bit more balance. Manuel Solomon has scored in his last five games. Uh, he is incredible in one on one situations. But I'd look to somebody like Alexander Mitrovic to pick up his form a bit because he's not looked quite the same demon in front of goal or indeed having the same motivation about him that gave Liverpool so many problems on the opening day, for example. And the whole team needs to be up for this to press Arsenal and to try and get into them the way that Everton did a few weeks ago. How do you see it going, Stuart, this game? Well, I think Archie's absolutely right. I think Fulham have to try and press Arsenal and make it difficult for them. And it's a great example, the Everton game, not particularly in the in the first half, but as they uh, Everton tried to press high up the field, they got very tight in midfield, they were aggressive in midfield. When you're playing at home, you can be more aggressive. When you play at the Emirates at the moment, the crowd get onto the referee and it's difficult to, to be aggressive. At home, they can be. And absolutely right, Mitrovic has to be a, a threat in the air because you see Arsenal against Bournemouth, you saw Arsenal against Sporting, they didn't defend set plays particularly well, and that was a real threat. And that's where Mitrovic and Tim Ream might cause Arsenal one or two problems. But I've seen Arsenal a lot this season, and they always believe they can win games, even when they're 2-0 down. They might be you know, not playing particularly well. They've got that edge about them at the moment, that they've got great belief they can always come back, create chances. If you were to go glass half empty, could you say that the signs of the season catching up with them here? No. No. Absolutely not. Listen, it... I, I, this is a team that's gone for its first Premier League title with this group of players. If anybody thinks that they're going to turn up and be half asleep because they played a Europa League game in, in midweek, you're absolutely kidding yourself. Kidding yourself. You know, I, I would suggest, had Arsenal won the league the last three years on the trot, maybe they would take their eye off the ball. Maybe they would just think they're going to turn up and win the game. But when you're going for your first title, when you're going to win the Premier League and you're at the top, it's not possible to go to a place like Fulham and be half asleep and think you just got to turn up. And there's nothing to suggest from the first game this season to right now that this Arsenal side doesn't turn up to play. Yes, sometimes you just don't play as well as you normally do. Sometimes teams defend well against you. Or you get a Bournemouth that, on the break... All of a sudden, you're 2-0 down. These things happen. But I'll tell you what, there's one thing that's not going to happen at Fulham. And Arsenal are not going to turn up and be half asleep. If Fulham are at their best and Mitrovic finds his, his scoring touch, then they may be able to get something out of this game. But I'll tell you what, Fulham's vanilla, let's be honest. And Arsenal's got way too many, way too many players right now that can win this game. I'm sorry, Archie, but I don't see anything <laughs> other than Arsenal victory. All right, it's matching his pessimism so when vanilla, it comes to Fulham. So I, vanilla. I, 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 I forget how Liverpool just... did against Fulham on the opening day. I forget what happened. But there oh, we sorry go. They won there we go. Sorry they won a game. Sorry about that. We didn't so win. I, 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 understand, I understand Stevie's, Stevie's uh, glass half full. Um, but to, 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 to that point, listen, I, I agree. There, there's no way Arsenal don't show up and don't come out come out firing. But to be 2 0 down at home to the team rooted to the to the bottom of the table, that is cause for concern. And as much as as much as you come back oh, and come you come on. As much as you come oh, back come on, cause there is yourself. there is nobody else oh, in this outplayed us there is nobody else in this league you give a 2-0 lead to <laughs> and expect to come back and win. 
You scored in yeah. 90th minute. Yeah. So he, what? I, all, all, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, this isn't all roses and petals here that, that, that you want. You made far harder work of the team bottom of the table in a league that you already have, you have wiggle room, but you know what City can be. While I, I accept, yeah, you, you take it for what it is, I, I think if you're not careful, there's some concerns that you have to be mindful of. No response to that? <laughs> All right. Hey. Well, let's see what Shaka thinks then when it comes score. to predictions, can the we? I'm looking for. What's Shaka saying? Oh, Arsenal 3 1. Oh, Arsenal 3 1. There you go, Shaka. There you go. <laughs> Definitely not going to concede <laughs> too early on in this one. Archie continuing with his pessimistic theme when it comes to his Fulham. We'll be speaking to Archie a little bit later about Bundesliga as well. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.